Today, we're going to be going over 11 huge mistakes that players make in Kingdom vs. Kingdom. What's going on guys? Cheers. Believe it or not, sometimes I do drink water. Anyway, guys, as somebody who lost literally everything in KVK, I need you to understand that some of these mistakes can be absolutely fatal. Now, about a year ago, I made a video talking about huge mistakes players are making in KVK, but a ton has changed in KVK in the last year. Now, I made that video with help from my good friend RK, and I figured it's about time that we go and make another one. And as much as I appreciate his help with making this list, I'm pretty sure his girlfriend is the brains behind the operation here. Now, I mean, come on. Just look at the bunny's face. Do you do you want some death? Anyway, before we begin, about 80% of you guys are not subscribed, so make sure you go down there, click that button. It really helps the channel a ton. Now, this list of mistakes is in no particular order when it comes to importance, except for number one. Number one is definitely the most important thing to avoid doing in KVK, and number six is really important for free-to-play players. Number 11 on the list is not doing your crystal research tech properly. Now, if you're a free-to-play player or low spender or even sometimes medium spender, you're not usually going to max out the entire tech before Kingsland. So having a guide going in is super important so that way you max out the things that are most useful for you when playing during KVK. It's also important to know, are you going to be a rally leader or a garrison leader or what troop types are you going to be focusing on? Being aware of these things before investing in your technology can help you out a ton in the long run, but either way, you want to go with more of the economic technology first before you start pumping a ton of crystals into your war tech. Now, shout out to Kingdom 1093 for this graphic, but everything in red here with a red box around it is what you should focus on if you're a free to play or low spender. So focusing on things like trees or barbarian reports or plunder are really important because they're going to either maximize your rewards that you get from barbarians, or they're going to help you with the amount of crystals that you need moving forward. Now, it's also worth noting that when you enter this KVK, you're going to have a crystal mine and a research center. Focusing on leveling up the crystal mine first is important, but it's also crucial to know that you should never be using research speed ups or building speed ups during KVK kvk for kvk things unless your city is already maxed there's no reason to speed up crystal research when you don't even have full t5s mistake number 10 that a lot of players make is that they use their kahar bone whistles way too early in case you're not familiar as you're doing bastion quests you're going to be getting items called kahar bone whistles these items can be used to summon kahar near your city and when you attack and kill kahar you actually get a ton of extra crystals you can start to get these bone whistles pretty early in the kvk but the problem is that there is a tech called plunder that will increase the amount that you get from killing Kahar by 35%. And since you can choose when you use the Kahar bone whistles, save all of those bone whistles until you get the maximum amount of rewards from them. Speaking of bastions, mistake number nine has to do with not doing your daily bastion quests. Every single day, you will get 15 daily bastion quests that you can do. And completing these is crucial for your crusader achievements, for your crystal generation, and also for getting really powerful powerful support skills from commanders. The more bastion quests that you complete, the harder your crystal mine is going to work in producing crystals for your city. But not all bastion quests are equal. Some of these quests are more worth doing than others. It's important to focus on ones that include like gathering or the ones that give you some of the Kahar bone whistles. And once in a while, you can do some of the training ones to get some nice rewards. But the good news is that you can refresh these quests so you don't have to do the ones that you either can't do or don't think are worth it. Of course, you're going to notice that some of the bastions have legendary commanders with really powerful support skills. So you absolutely want to focus the legendary bastions first, unless none of them are available. And then obviously go ahead and do your dailies for one of the epics, because not only do the legendary ones give you powerful legendary skills, but you also will actually get more rewards from them, which is actually something that I didn't even realize until I actually looked into it. Mistake number eight that I see a lot of players making is starting a rally at the wrong time with the wrong commanders, especially if they don't have max tech. Unless you've coordinated with leadership, with your alliance and with your coalition, you shouldn't be starting a rally attack on pretty much anything other than maybe barbed forts. Now, the most obvious reason as to why you shouldn't do that is because these rallies will probably fail, right? If you don't have max tech and you're using older commanders in heroic anthem, it's just, it's not going to, it's not going to do well. That's going to cause your alliance or your coalition to have massive losses. And everyone's going to be angry about that. And it's just going to be a waste. The second less obvious reason is because if you start a rally, then nobody else in your coalition can on 
on that target so just like one alliance can't double rally a flag or a player one coalition cannot double rally a flag or a player so if you start that rally the other whales and the other alliances can't do it so not only will you have tons of troop losses but you're also going to frustrate your allies which is never good speaking of frustrating allies mistake number seven comes in the form of attacking other alliances in the same camp as you i know sometimes allies can be useless or annoying or stupid or frustrating or whatever the case might be but if you end up attacking other alliances in the same camp you're not going to get any of those kills counted towards your crusader achievements and you can't even take any resources from their cities so it's literally just a lose lose you're just losing resources and troops with almost no gain at all mistake number six that a lot of players make is not chaining barbarians in kvk chaining barbarians in kvk not only helps you with your crusader achievements but you get a ton of value out of the ap that you're saving by getting those free kills this is why it's so important for free-to-play players to be chaining barbarians especially with the richard ysg combo or richard ethelflaed if you don't have ysg maxed and on top of that there's an incentive to chain barbarians in kvk because barbarians actually cost more ap to attack because they're higher levels so if you're a free-to-play player get out there start chaining you're gonna get a ton of value guys we're about halfway through this list and if you found it useful so far make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton mistake number five is absolutely infuriating when it comes to zeroing other players in kvk it doesn't matter if a target appears to be offline if you start to mass scout them it's going to give them notifications on their phone and this is actually not exclusive to heroic anthem okay this is for every kvk just don't scout a target if you're planning on rallying it. if you're a player who sees 50 notifications of your city getting scouted and you're in kvk you're just gonna log on and use a bubble or teleport away unless you're me of course who was legitimately passed out when he got zeroed speaking of getting zeroed mistake number four is taking a city rally when you don't have max tech i cannot emphasize this enough the technology in kvk is absolutely devastating if you don't have the commanders for it if you don't have the power for it and you don't have the kvk tech for it do not take a city rally it's just not worth it because at that point you can also get imprisoned and at that point you might as well just kiss your troops goodbye unless of course you have so few troops that you can move all of them out of the city with army expansions which is a nice little hack mistake number three is stealing your coalition's kill when the other alliances did all the work to burn the flags this is super irritating right if your alliance is pushing really hard you've got a ton of players online and you're doing all the work to rallying down these flags and there's some players that get exposed if your allies in your coalition then rally that target that means that you can't rally that target because you're in the same coalition and thus they're going to get all of the resources kill points and everything like that for that player that they're zeroing even though your alliance did all the work to make that possible it's just really irritating very frustrating and it's really bad for diplomacy which is crucial to winning any kvk mistake number two goes for pretty much every kvk and that is not using all of your troops speed ups and resources for a single pass fight not only can this ruin the rest of your kvk experience because then you'll just be bored with nothing to do and no troops to use remember kvk is an event where endurance is the most important thing so you have to be able to weather the storm know when to cut your losses so that way you can put all of your troops and resources behind a future battle that might be more important the only exception to this is when you're currently in a pass fight that you think will actually make or break the rest of the kvk if winning a single pass fight will win you the rest of kvk at that point then yes of course go all out and finally mistake number one is not being on alliance territory this point has to be reiterated because in heroic anthem you are a part of a coalition which means you can teleport onto the land of multiple different alliances the only territory where you are actually safe is the territory of your own alliance that you're currently in things can change rapidly in heroic anthem so always make sure that you're on safe territory do not log off while you're not on safe territory trust me i know this from experience just assume that unless you are in your starting zone it is not safe and even then if you're nearing the end of kvk that place is not safe either you might as well just go back to home kingdom the number one mistake in kvk is getting zeroed so don't let it happen take it from me just don't let it happen and yet despite making this video i know that there's probably going to be some of you who still end up in that camp
anyway guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps the channel out a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below any of your mistakes that you think i missed in this video and maybe i'll make a part two as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter discord facebook all that stuff is always down below and there's also a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc it's a program called blue sound it's my favorite way to play the game you get to see it on a bigger screen and like i said it's free if you don't like it you can always uninstall it later with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace